Hallelujah. Come on, just give God some praise in this place. Come on, give God some praise. Hallelujah. And we bless the Lord. And we bless the Lord. Amen. We thank God for everyone that's out tonight. I don't know about you, but I'm telling you, it's been something. Yes. Amen. It's been really, 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 really something. Yes. All right. We encounter number four. If you don't have a handout, raise your hand. Look on the table. You'll see the teaching outline. Okay. And so we are on encounter number four. And this is the ascension up into Mount Sinai. And it is the second time that Moses goes up into Sinai. And the reason it's the second time, because the first time is when he is meet the burning bush. And so this is the second time. And this time God gives him the uh, commandments. Okay? And other uh, instructions. And we went over a little bit of, of the commandments that God gave him last night. But this time... Here, Moses stays up there for 40 days. And what we talked about last night in the, it's the uh, third encounter, he went up into the mountain, and God wanted to glorify or sanctify himself among the people. And the people became afraid because of what they saw and heard. And God just talked to Moses about the commandments. And Moses, in return, as God talked to him, he turned around and talked to the people. Mm -hmm. And the people said to Moses, we don't want God to talk to us because he's too powerful. Mm -hmm. we rather hear you. Let you talk to us, not let God talk to you. This time, God calls Moses back into the mountain, and God does something different. Now, here, Moses stays up there for 40 days. Now, I want to, I want to point out something you got to catch. Remember, they did not want God to talk to them. Remember what I shared with you last night. If God, if they would allow God to speak to them, then God's word would have came into them and it would have changed them because God would have talked to them face to face as he was talking with Moses. And they rejected that. So therefore, what was about ready to happen with what they was going through, they were, what were they going to get ready to go through, they were not prepared to handle it. To have an encounter with God and then God talk to you and speak his word to you, and you understand what God said, prepares you for your time of testing. Moses went up in the mountain, he stayed there for 40 days. The number 40 in the Hebrews is a period of testing. Israel stayed in the wilderness for 40 days. It's a period of testing. Jesus in the wilderness for 40 days, period of testing. 40 is a period of testing. All right? So, so here Moses goes up in there the second time. He's there for 40 days. 40 nights and 40 days, actually. And here, God does something totally different. He watches the finger of God write on tablets of stone. His command. If we follow what was given to us, 
you will see a tablet shape with ten commandments. But if you follow the text that's written, God gave Moses more than just ten commandments. He gave him a book of laws. He covered men servant. He covered stealing. He covered uh, uh, husband and wife relationship, ch uh, children and parents relationship. All this was written by the finger of God. And you just thought he just wrote ten things. You thought that because that's what you was taught. If you read, then you would know that that was more. And I, you'll see that tonight. All right? Before we get to that, I want to go over to Deuteronomy chapter 8. I'm going to start at verse 1. And I just want to read one, two, and three. Deuteronomy chapter eight, verses one, two, and three. Everybody there? Yeah. All the commandments which I command thee this day shall you observe to do. That you may live and multiply and go in and possess the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers. And thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee these forty years in the wilderness to humble thee, to prove thee, to know what is in thine heart. Whether thou wouldst keep his commandment or no. He, and he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger. Fed thee with manna which thou knowest not. Neither did thy fathers know. That he might make thee know that man doth not live by bread alone. But by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of the Lord doth man live. Do verse 4. Thy raiment waxed not old upon thee, neither did thy feet swell these forty years. All right. I need you to pay attention to this because the people that Moses are speaking to is not the ones or the elders, the ones that came out of Egypt. These are their children. These are the fourth generation. If you remember what I told you earlier, the other night, that it was the fourth generation that was going to possess the land. Mm -hmm. Their children watched their fathers die in the wilderness. And Moses is talking to their children and saying, you saw what God did to your fathers. Because they did not obey his laws and his statutes. And how he allowed you to suffer the same thing so that he could see whether or not you would follow him or do what they did. Jesus, Jesus. Yes, mm -hmm. So the period of testing for 40 years wasn't for, that, for the generation that rejected God who didn't want to see the face of God. It was for the ones who were going to inherit the promised land. Yes. <laughs> See, before God allows you to come into what he has for you, he has to prove your heart to see whether or not your heart is going to be right with him. Jesus, Jesus. And a lot of times he's put people in your life and set an example of what you should not do. 
just to see whether or not you learned the lesson of what not to do. Y'all ain't done. Everybody got this? All right. So go back to Exodus chapter 24. All right, so remember, 40 days, Moses goes up into the mountain. All right, so God here speaks to Moses. He said unto Moses, Come up unto the Lord, thou and Aaron and Nadab and Abihu and 70 of the elders of Israel, and worship you afar off. He said, I want you and these elders to come up in the mountain and I want you to worship the Lord afar off. In other words, when they came up as a group up into the mountain and they got to a certain place, they worshiped the Lord. They, and what they did, it should tell you what they did, but what they did was they brought up sacrifices and, and different things and they offered it before the Lord. That's the form of worship. But then God did something different with Moses. Look at the next verse. And Moses was alone shall come near the Lord. They stayed back. But Moses went into the presence of the very presence of God by himself. The reason Moses could go into the very presence of God by himself is because God, as he said earlier, wanted to establish in the hearts and in the minds of the elders and the children of Israel that the relationship that he and Moses had was different than anybody in the camp and that whatever Moses said came from him and that he was with Moses and that they were supposed to fear Moses because of his relationship with God. It wasn't something that they thought Moses had. It was something that they saw or witnessed that Moses had. In other words, earlier we talked about this last night. God said he did this with Moses before the church of Israel so that he would establish among the children of Israel so that they would fear him and his relationship with Moses so that they would know that whatever Moses speak, that it came from him. Remember what we talked about last night. God, Moses is standing in the presence of God and God said, tell the children of Israel this. And, and, and Moses will hear this, and then Moses will turn from the presence of God, and then say, the Lord says so, 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 so. And the people will ask and say, all that the Lord has said, we will do. And Moses turned back to the Lord, and he said, they said all that you say they will do. And then the Lord says so, 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 and Moses will turn and say, the Lord says so, 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 and they said, all that the Lord said we will do. And he will turn back, and he will say, the people said, and that's where he was going back and forth with them. And then they got scared. They said, Moses, don't, don't, don't let God talk to us anymore. He's too powerful for us. Just let you talk to us. Yes. Because once God will establish the confidence, he will talk to Moses and just talk to them himself. But they rejected it. All right, verse 2. And Moses alone came near the Lord, but they shall not come nigh or near, neither shall the people go up with him. And Moses came and told the people all the words of the Lord and all the judgments, and all the people answered with one voice and said, All the words which the Lord hath said will we do. And Moses wrote all the words of the Lord, rose up early in the morning, built an altar under the hill, twelve pillars according to the twelve tribes of Israel, 
He sent young men of the children of Israel, which offered burnt offering and sacrificed a peace offering of an oxen unto the Lord. And Moses took half of the blood and put it in a basin. <coughs> half of the blood he sprinkled on the altar. He took the book of the covenant, read it in the audience of the people, and they said, All that the Lord has said, we will do and be obedient. And Moses took the blood and sprinkled it up on the people and said, Behold the blood of the covenant which the Lord had made with you concerning all these words. Then went up Moses, Aaron, Nabal, Abihu, and seventy of the elders of Israel. And they saw God, they saw the God of Israel, and there was under his feet as it were a paved work of saffron stone. They saw God. And under his feet was a path of saffron stone. All of them saw. They saw God. Everybody that went up with Moses saw God. But they could not go close to him. Only Moses could. Are you getting this? Right, watch. And it was, in his word, the body of heaven, and in his clearness, and upon the nobles of the children of Israel, he laid not his hands. Also they saw God, and did eat and drink. Who ate and drink? Who ate and drink? God did. They saw God eat and drink. What did God eat and drink of the offering, the sacrifice that Moses killed and bought before the Lord and took it to the Lord, what the people had agreed to do, and God took the sacrifice, he drunk the blood, and he ate part of the lamb and the bread right before the 70 elders. Wow. How many of y'all knew that? Nope, I didn't. <clears throat> Y'all been reading this stuff the whole time, didn't you? It's right here. <laughs> Somebody say, you making this stuff up. This stuff ain't in there. It's right here. It sure is. It's right there. <laughs> they enter into covenant with God. And God in return accepted their covenant by partaking of it. What do you think when you when 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 we participate in communion? He did it first. That's what he's doing. He's cutting covenant with Israel. Israel went into covenant with God. All that you say you would do, we will do. And then he turned around and accepted that covenant and went into covenant with them. All right? Watch. They saw God eat and drink. And the Lord, verse 12, And the Lord said unto Moses, Come to me into the mount and be there, and I will give thee tables, tables of stone and law and commandments which I have written that thou may teach them. What did I tell you earlier? All y'all seen is the two tablets. Mm -hmm. and this right here tells you it was more than just two tablets. Mm -hmm. And you've been going around with just ten commandments mm -hmm. and said these are the laws of God. When actually they are more just him. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, 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 it ain't my fault. It ain't, it ain't my, my fault. fault. It's the way I was raised. It's the way, it's the way I was raised. raised. <laughs> 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 All 
All right. Verse 13. <coughs> Moses rose up and his minister Joshua. And Moses went up into the mount of God. And he said unto the elders, tarry you here for us until we come again unto you. And behold, Aaron and Ur are with you. And if any man have any matters to do, let him come unto them. So he left who in charge? Aaron and Ur. So let you're in charge. So if anybody have any concerns, they are the ones left in charge. Remember what I told you the other night. When people are murmuring and complaining, and leaders, mind is not above them and see what God sees, they're only going to follow the complaining of the people. Um, and once they follow the complaining of the people, they're going to give the people what they want and not what God wants. Mm -hmm. Ooh, Jesus. That's just, this is why it is important that you learn how to always minister up from God's position. The encounters take you above the murmuring and complaining so you see as God. So when you preach or minister or teach, you teach from being up over the people and not with them. <coughs> Even though complaining, I know you complain, but let me tell you what's going to happen. If you remain steadfast and go through this thing and hold on to God's unchanging hand, this is what's going to happen. Because God's going to see you through this. Yeah. I know you don't understand it now, but God's going to see you through this. Martin Luther King says, I've been to the mountaintop. I've seen the other side. I know the killing and all the stuff that's going on. He said, but I've already seen the victory. Are you, are, you, are you hearing this? All right. Verse 15. And Moses went up into the mount, and a cloud what? Covered the mountain. So when the cloud covered it, it hid Moses from everybody else. It wasn't a dark cloud. It was a white, pure cloud. It was the same cloud that took Jesus up. It was called the glory cloud. The glory cloud is also known as the tabernacle of God, or the dwelling place of God. So when Moses and Joshua went up, God took them in the glory cloud and brought them into his tabernacle. And Moses watched the finger of God right on stone. Watch the books. Verse 16, and the glory of the Lord stayed upon Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it six days. And the seventh day he called Mo unto Moses out of the midst of the cloud. And the sight of the glory of the Lord was like a devouring fire on the top of the mount in the eyes of the children of Israel. So the children of Israel is down on the ground. And they're looking up in the mountain, and all they could see is that the top of the mountain is on fire. Mm. But where Moses is at and Joshua, it's nothing but a white glory cloud. Mm. 
See, the presence of the Lord when you're in it is peaceful. But to those who are unfamiliar with God, he's a consuming fire. Mm -hmm. Those who don't know him become afraid of him for what they see because God's chose his fire. His fire represents his judgment. And all Israel saw was God's judgment. They saw his fierceness. And he wanted them to see that so that they would be afraid of him. Why he want them to be afraid? To fear the Lord, Solomon said, is the beginning of wisdom. If a person does not fear God, they are a fool. Because a fool who says there is no God. Fools are right in their own eyes. I was talking with someone the other day, and I said there's only two things that we have to answer for before when we stand before the judgment seat. Loving God and loving each other. And those two things depends on how we treat God and how we treat one another. And he says, upon all the sayings of the law and the prophet hang these two things. In other words, first I put <coughs> love me and love each other. And then all the sayings of the law and the prophets follow that. So you basically will be judged at the judgment seat off of love. All right. Verse 18, and Moses went into the midst of the cloud and get him up in the mount. And Moses was in the mount 40 days and 40 nights. That's how long he stayed there in the presence of God. All right. So we know in verse 25 here, Mo God is, gives him the first thing God began to give him in verse 25 is the order of the tabernacle. Now, the tabernacle is, is the dwelling place of God. The tabernacle consists of three parts or three components. You have the outer part, the sanctuary, and then the most, most holy place. Each one of those has to do with how a person approaches God. The outer part is where the sin offering is made. The sanctuary is where the priest works. Then the most holy place is where the high priest works. So you have the people who bring their sin offerings. Then the priests will take the blood and the sacrifices into the sanctuary. And you have the table of showbread. And then you have uh, uh, the oil and the lampstand. And then before that, you had the altar, the incense, right before the most holy place. And on the Day of Atonement is when the priest, the high priest, if the, if the oil, the altar incense, if the incense is going up, that means God is making atonement for Israel's sin for a year. And the high priest will take the blood and will go through the veil and he will sprinkle the blood of the, of the red heifer on the on the altar and what when he hits it the way they know that god will see it is that when he hits the golden ark the blood will dry up mm. that means that god will forgive their sin for one year just for a year that's called atonement and he would do they have to do that every year and the thing about the atonement it did not remove the sin it, it just covered it they reminded them every year. So therefore, they were always reminded every year of their sin. Jesus, Jesus. So the law could not do completely away with sin. It was a mind, it was a reminder of sin all the time. So therefore, it was not God's 
perfect or complete will. It was a shadow of what was to come. And when something is a shadow, it is just a figure. And if you learn the shadow of it, then you better to receive the real deal when it shows up. So when Jesus showed up on the scene, he says, I come in the volume of the whole book. It's written of me to do your will. I am the lamb that takes away the sin of the world, not just Israel, but the world. When I shed my blood, I removed sin once and for all. So right now, today, there is no more shadow. We're sitting right now with the glory cloud not on us, but in us. Sometimes when you get alone and you begin to pray and hit that, hit, hit that certain place with God, and all of a sudden you can feel the heat come in your face, that's the Shekinah presence, the glory of God. And it's not something that's coming on you. It's actually something that's coming from in you. Yes. Thank you Jesus. Here's the biggest mistake that most Christians, excuse me, this is the biggest mistake that most church folks make. Uh. <laughs> the moment you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you're still looking for something to come on you. If you have the Holy Spirit, the day the Holy Spirit enters you, nothing else comes on you. Everything comes from within you. Because now you are filled with the fullness of him and it is coming out of you. Yes. Because Jesus said, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will lead and guide you in all truth and show you things to come and reveal everything to you. So it wouldn't come well, It's coming. It, Lord, I need, I need you to give me more. I need you to give me more. I need you to give me more. Come on, baptize me again, Lord. Baptize me again. <laughs> I don't need to baptize you once and for all. Oh, mm -hmm. Wow. I need more. <laughs> <laughs> you cannot <laughs> the Bible said we are filled with the fullness of him mm -hmm. and what we're actually doing with the theology and philosophy of men we actually have the Holy Spirit wandering in the wilderness of theology and church mm -hmm. Ever learning, Paul said, and never able to come into the knowledge of the truth. And where's the truth? It's inside. All right? So he's given them the pattern of the, ta of the tabernacle. He talks about this. So he goes through this all throughout the whole thing. All right? So he talks about Aaron, the priesthood, and how they're separated. He talks about the incense, the altar, and all this. All right? I want you to go over to chapter 32. All right. And verse 1 says this. When the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mount, the people gathered to themselves together unto Aaron and said unto him, make, make us gods which shall go before us, for as for this 
This Moses, the man that brought us out of the land of Egypt, we want not what is become of him. Remember, remember what God wanted to do with the children of Israel, right? He wanted to sanctify himself in them, and they rejected him. And they said, you don't talk to us. We rather hear Moses. Mm -hmm. Now God has kept Moses in the mountain for 40 days and 40 nights, and now they don't know what happened to Moses. Mm -hmm. They said, we don't know what, what, what's, what's up with Moses. So they go to Aaron and said, Aaron, make us a God of gold. And let this be our God. Remember what I told you. Aaron is Aaron and Ur is left in charge. Mm -hmm. So what does Aaron do? Give the people what they want. Why? Aaron's an elder. Why didn't Aaron say Moses is up there with God? <laughs> Why? Aaron don't know what happened to Moses. <laughs> but he's. He was, a, he was the one that's supposed to be talking mm -hmm. for Moses. That's right. He was a Levite, mm -hmm. which made him the high priest. Mm -hmm. God just gave Moses the order of the priesthood, and Aaron and his sons were the high priests. Mm -hmm. Now the high priest is making a golden cat mm -hmm. for idol worship. Mm -hmm. The man who's going to stand in the gap between the judgment of God and the people is now building an idol for the people. Every time, if you follow Aaron, every time the people murmur and complain, Aaron gave him to him because he was more afraid of the people than he was of God. Mm -hmm. That's right. Now keep in mind, Aaron was one of the ones that was up there who saw God talking to Moses. Mm -hmm. He saw the fire of God. He saw God eating and drinking. That encounter did not change him. How many times have you, us, have had an encounter and experienced God in a way, but it did not change us right away? You got slain in the spirit. You had a vision, an out of body. Something happened to you, but it did not affect you right away. We go back to what I started off from the beginning. 40 days. 40 is a number of testing, of proving. This was Aaron's time of proving. And he fails. Wow. And he doesn't just fail this time. He fails over and over and over again until God says, I am, I've had enough mm. of Aaron. Mm. He said, I'm sick of it. Bring Aaron up here to the mountain. Take the garment off of him so I can kill him. That's exactly what God told Moses. Brought him up into the mountain. He said, put El his son Elazar. Make him the high priest. When Moses lifted the high priest's garment off of him, God, the scripture says, and the Lord slew Aaron right before their face. And he put it upon his oldest son Elazar. But as long as he had that garment on, God couldn't touch him. Mm -hmm. Because the high priest's garment was the mantle of God. And Aaron carried the mantle, watch, in unbelief. Oh, wow. You got a whole lot of preachers with the mantle of God in unbelief. Wow. Okay, where, where is it?
What did I tell you? Okay, okay 32. I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm back now. So, verse 2. Aaron said to them, break off your golden earrings, which are in your ears, your wives, your sons, your daughters, and bring them unto me. And all the people broke off the golden earrings, which were in their ears, and brought them to Aaron. He received them at their hands and fashioned it with a graving tool. After he had made it into a molten calf, and they said, These be thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. And, and when Aaron saw it, he built an altar before it. And Aaron made proclamation and said, Tomorrow is a feast to the Lord. This is a man that God sent to be with Moses. This is the high priest of Israel. This is a man who's responsible for going into the Holy of Holies. And in this hour of testing, fails. Verse 6. They rose up early on the morrow and offered burnt offering and bought peace offering. And the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to what? Play. Wow. Now just think about what these children of Israel have seen God do. Remember what I talk about, what we started off, encounters. Encounters, our definition, is a meeting, especially one that is unplanned, unexpected, or brief. To meet, especially unexpected. God came to Israel and Egypt, did miracles by miracles, and then made a difference between them and the Egyptians and brought them out with a mighty hand, destroyed the Egyptians, opened the Red Sea. He did all these mighty signs and to prove that he was God. He spoke before them and allowed them to hear his voice. Then he put in glory on top of Moses. He spoke to Moses and Moses spoke to them and the people heard God and talk, Moses talking and they heard the voice of God speaking to them and all this. They done seen God do all this and then they don't forgot. And now they want to worship a golden calf. After God has done all this. God done healed your body. God done raised you from the dead. God done saved your soul and done did this. You done preached for 10, 20 years and you done did all this. And now you out doing this. In your time, your season of testing, your heart failed to remember the one who brought you out and delivered you. Everybody sitting in this room and everybody who names the name of Christ will have a 40 year testing. 40 years is a time of proving. Verse 7. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go, get thee down, for thy people which for, watch this, he didn't say my people. <laughs> you see that? He didn't say my people. He said your people. That you bought out of Egypt have corrupted themselves. They have turned aside, walked quickly out of the way which I command them. They have made them a molten calf and worship it and have sacrificed thereunto and said, These be thy gods, O Israel, which have bought thee up out of the land of Egypt. 
And the Lord said unto Moses, I have seen this people, and behold, it is a stiff-necked people. Mm -hmm. Now watch. He said, I've seen this people. In other words, he says, I already know the trouble that this people is going to give me. Mm -hmm. I bought them out of Egypt, but Egypt is still in them. Mm -hmm. And they do not want to get rid of Egypt out of them. Mm -hmm. So they're stiff-necked because they don't want to let go of what's in them. When I wanted to sanctify myself in them, they said, no, you're too powerful for us. We want to hear, we'd rather hear Moses. Because with Moses, we ain't afraid of him, but we're afraid of you. <laughs> uh, watch. Let me help you out. All right? Patricia, God wants you to get rid of this. God wants you to get rid of this. God wants you to do this. this, this. Well, I hear what you're saying, Apostle, but... Yeah, until the Lord do it, I ain't gonna change. Then go. Whole new different ball game. All of a sudden now, she stays away. Because now God got it. So when the presence of God comes around, she don't want to be nowhere around it because it convinces what's in her. And that's what the children of Israel stayed away from, the presence. Because that which was not like God, they were convicted. And they rejected that. Remember what we read in Deuteronomy 8. I brought you out here so I can prove what's in you, in your hearts. Wow. So his presence is what reveals what's in your heart. Man only calls you to front. But the presence of God Reveals your heart. So he says, I already know these people. They're stiff neck. They're hard hearted. He goes on so far to tell Moses, he says, I'm going to take you and raise up a nation under me. And then Moses shifts from being a prophet to become the intercessor. And I honestly believe that God said that and caused it to happen to see would Moses stand up for Abraham. When I first started this series, I said the whole thing is about one man, Abraham. God made a promise to Abraham, and all of this is concerning that one promise to that one man. All right, watch. Verse 9 again. And the Lord said unto Moses, I have seen this people. Behold, it is a stiff-necked people. He said, Now therefore let me alone, that my wrath may wax hot against them, and that I may consume them, and I will make of thee a great nation. And Moses besought the Lord his God, and said, Lord, why do thou wax, wrath wax hot against thy people? which thou hast brought forth out of the land of Egypt with great power and with a mighty hand. Wherefore should the Egyptians speak and say for the mischief? Did he bring them out and slay them in the mountains to consume them from the face of the earth? Turn from thy fierce wrath and repent of this evil against thy people. Verse 13. Remember Abraham. Isaac and Israel, thy servants, to whom thou swearest by thine own self, saith unto them, I will multiply your seed as the stars of heaven, and all this land that I have spoken I will give unto your seed, and they shall inherit it forever. 14. And the Lord repent of the evil which he thought of unto his people. The Lord repented. That means the Lord said, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I forgot I said that to them. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Okay, I changed my mind. I'm not going to destroy them. Thank you, Moses, for bringing me back. He was so hot. Because all he thought about was what he just did with them. How he showed his strength, showed his power. And then they just throw it up in his face and treat it as he did nothing. 
That's why he called him stiff neck. Has he ever done something for somebody and they just, you know, act like you ain't done nothing for them at all? Just treat you any kind of way, stuff like that. My God, you just want to go. <laughs> <laughs> that's how God is. <laughs> and Moses was basically telling him, it's not about them. It's about Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You swear to yourself what you will do to them and what you promise. And he repented, forgive me for them. I changed my life. Moses reminded God of what he said. When you're at your situation, just remind God what he said. I ain't got no help here. <laughs> <laughs> Just remind yes. God of what yes. he yes. said. Yes. That's all. Just remind him. He who has He's the only one who can keep and do and fulfill what he has promised. Amen. All right? Now what? Let me see you go down there. So verse 15. Moses turned and went down from the mount. The two tablets of the testimony were in his hand, and the tablets were written on both sides. One side and the other side were written. And the tablets were the work of God and written was, was the writing of God graven upon the tablets. And when Joshua heard the noise of the people as, he sh as they shouted, and he said unto Moses, there's a noise of war in the camp. He said, it is, no, it, is the, it is not the voice of them that shout for mastery, neither is it the voice of them that cry for being overcome. It is but the noise of them that sing do I hear. And it came to pass, as soon as he came near into the camp, he saw the calf and the dancing, and Moses' anger waxed hot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let me <laughs> All right. He cast the tablets out of his hand and break them beneath the mountain. Mm -hmm. Now watch. Moses stood in the gap between the children of Israel and God because all he could remember was what God promised Abraham. But he couldn't see what was going on. It's good for us sometimes to be with God so that we can't see what God sees. But then we have to learn how to maintain our composure when we see what God sees. <laughs> so that we can respond like God responds. God repented. Moses did. <laughs> I'm going to say that again. God repented. Moses did. He threw the, those tablets at the base of the mountain. The earth opened up and swallowed the image, the golden calf, and people. He took that thing, melted it down, put it in water, and made the people drink it. Then those who said, he said, those on the Lord's side, he said, come to me. Amen. And then those that wanted to follow the Lord came. Those that didn't, he told the priest, get your swords and go kill them. Oh, See, so you have to learn how to kill that that separates you from God. Yes. All right there. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yes. I'll say that one more again. Mm -hmm. so you have to learn how to kill that that separates you 
from the will and the purpose yes. of God. Yes. Amen. Now God will let it live just to see when you kill it. You're praying that God will kill it. <laughs> but God will wait to see what you're going to do. I created it with a purpose. But you're in the midst of your 40 day testing. The ability for it to live or die is yours. Somebody come and give you a prophecy. The Lord said he's going to take them down and he's going to raise up somebody else. Oh, thank you, God. You're going to deliver me. But you don't realize that the same people that God's going to raise up somebody else, he's going to change them into a different man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It'll be the same people. They just change into a different man. Why? Because they get a revelation. Mm -hmm. Moses didn't need a different people. It's the same people. It's just that the mixed multitude was dealt with. The cancer, the unbelievers, the rambles, the murmurs and complainers, those who thought they was better than Moses. Wow. So I want to go to Go over to the next chapter, chapter 33. I'm almost finished. Lord have mercy. Hey, ain't this something? Mm -hmm. All right. 33 verse 1. And the Lord said unto Moses, Depart and go up hence, thou and the people which thou hast brought up out of the land of Egypt, Unto the land I swear unto Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and to the seed will I give it. He says, I will send an angel before thee. I will drive out the Canaanites, the Amorites, the Hittites, the Persiacites, the Hittites, and the Jebusites. Unto a land flowing with milk and honey, for I, for I will not go up in the midst of thee, for thou art a stiff-necked people, lest I consume thee in the west. Now, everybody, you heard that, and you say, okay, God is, now they don't do this, and God is saying the same thing. No, he's not. The difference here is this. Before, he said, he's going to give them this, and he will be in the midst of them. Now, he's saying, I'm going to give you this, but I'm not going to be in the midst of you. Go down further, he says, I'm not going to send my angels in front of you to fight for you. Because you've done this, now you're going to have to fight yourselves. Because before, the angels were going to go, and the angels were going to fight for them. So they wouldn't even have to fight. When the people here heard that Israel was coming, they would flee. Because they heard what God had did in Egypt. So they would literally leave. They would get to the cities and the people would be gone. Mm -hmm. Because they were afraid of the God of Israel. Mm -hmm. But because they did this, God removed the fear of these nations off them and they now Israel had to fight. Because they did this. He says, I'm not going to be in the midst of you. Least I consume you. Because right now, his, his anger is fierce. It's hot. And all he knows is, you just won't go. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how it is. It's just like one more word and I'm going to smack you. And that's how it is. So he said, if I stay in the midst of you, I'm going to consume you while you're in the way. Mm -hmm. So what he does, he said, I'm going to stay behind you. And the tabernacle that Moses makes, instead of it being in the midst of them, it now follows them. The tabernacle was the presence of God. It's where the presence of God rested. So the presence of God was supposed to rest in the midst of Israel. 
And because they've done this, here is now behind them. And you can go through this and you'll see where God would call Moses. And Moses would go into the tabernacle. But he would have to leave the congregation and go to the back of the, of the people where the, tent, the tabernacle or the tent of the congregation is what it's called. At. And God would be standing in the doorway as a pillar of fire. And he would call Moses. And Moses would come into the doorway and go in. He never, ever put that tent again in the midst of the people because of this one thing. Right? Watch. Verse 4. And said, and when the people heard these evil tidings, they moaned, and no man put on his ornaments. Ornaments is jewels, earrings, gold, silver. They they quiet. Because they built that golden cat. <laughs> <laughs> See, they won't about to put no more diamonds in their bag. <laughs> For the Lord said to Moses, Say unto the children of Israel, You are a stiff-necked people. I will come up in the midst of thee in a moment mm. and consume thee. Therefore now put off thy ornament from thee that I may know what to do unto thee. And the children of Israel stripped themselves of their ornament at Mount Horeb, and Moses took the tabernacle and pitched it without the camp, or far off from the camp, and called it the tabernacle of the congregation. And it came to pass that everyone which sought the Lord went out unto the tabernacle of the congregation, which was without the camp. And it came to pass when Moses went out unto the tabernacle, that all the people rose and stood every man at his tent door, and look after Moses until he was gone into the tabernacle. And it came to pass as Moses entered into the tabernacle, the cloud pillar descended and stood at the door of the tabernacle, and the Lord talked with Moses. And they sat in their tent doors and watched this. He never changed how he spoke to Moses in front of him. The only thing that he changed was this time when he talked to Moses, they didn't hear. Jesus. Before when he talked to Moses, they heard it. Now they did not hear it. They could only see it, but they don't. Which actually gives us a description of the body of Christ of our day. We see a lot of signs of God, but we not hear him. You have more prophets than you ever had on the face of the earth, than you ever had in the history of the earth. And you have very few that are actually telling you what God is really saying. thing that could ever happen to us is for God to shut his mouth. And when there is no word, there is no voice, we're left to our own thinking, our own heart, our own religion, our own philosophy, our own ideas. <coughs> You're left with the tree of knowledge of good and evil. 
And when you're left with the tree of knowledge of good and evil, man will corrupt themselves and become God. And begin to worship the creature more than the creator. Yeah. And the earth is full of creature worshipers. Mm -hmm. I want to go real quick, and I'm almost finished here. Uh, verse 11. And the Lord spake unto Moses, what? Face, face to face. As a man speaketh unto his friends. And he turned again into the camp. But his servant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man, departed not out of the tabernacle. <laughs> Moses turned back. God talked to Moses face to face. Moses turned was going back into the camp and Joshua stayed in the tabernacle. Remember what God said about Joshua and Caleb? They had a different spirit. Because they, when Mo, wherever Moses went, they went with him. They never rejected God. Got to remember that. And Moses said unto the Lord, See, thou sayest unto me, Bring up this people. Thou hast not let me know whom thou wilt send with me. Yet thou hast said, I know thee by name. And thou hast thou also found grace in my sight. Now therefore I pray thee, if I have found grace in thy sight, show me now thy way, that I may know thee. Here's the word. Everybody say, know thee. Know, know thee. thee. That word know in the Hebrew is a word called yada. Remember I told you this the other night? Yes. Yada. Yada. Yes. yes. Okay? So Moses want to yada God, know or discover God. So all that he's seen, all he's experienced, he's telling God right now, I don't know you. And how many of y'all think this is kind of weird right now? Think about it. Think about what Moses been through. All right, here God, he was just with God and just seeing all God do this. Now God won't destroy these people and take him and raise them with another people. Now Moses is kind of confused. Now either you're going to keep your word or what you're I, really, I, you know, I thought I knew you, but I don't really know you now. If I really found favor and grace with you, then you have to do something more. You're going to have to prove this to me. All right? So watch what he does. He said, now therefore, 13 again, he said, now therefore I pray thee that I have found that if I have found grace in thy sight, show me now thy way that I may know thee, that I may find grace in thy sight, and consider that this nation is thy people. And he said, my presence shall go with thee, and I will give thee rest. So my presence, my glory shall go with you. It will all, in other words, he's telling Moses, he said, one thing you will never have to worry about. My presence will always be with you. Presence, glory, face. If you look at your paper, presence means face. So he's telling Moses, my face will always be on you. You will always be in my face. You look just like your daddy. <laughs> so God was actually telling Moses, you will look just like me. My presence will always be with you because you will look like me. Right there, immediately put Moses with Jesus at Mount Transfiguration. That just established him forever. All right? I'm going to say, well, watch. So, 15, he said to him, If thy presence go not with me, he said, then carry us not hence. So if you're not going to do this, then don't take us no farther. All right? For here, wherein shall it be known here that I and thy people have found grace in thy sight, 
It is not in that thou goest with us, so shall we be separate, I and thy people, from all the people that are upon the face of the earth. And the Lord said unto Moses, I will do this thing also that thou spoken, for thou hast found grace in my sight, and I know thee by name. So Moses just petitioned the Lord. I want you to make it known right now that me and this people will be different and treated different by you than all of the people on the face of the earth that we will have more favor with you than any other people on the face of the earth. Now here's Moses, 40 days with God, demanding God, if I've got this favor with you, then you do this. And then God says, I will do this that you ask. Y'all ain't talking. I will do this thing that you just asked. I will give you and this people favor, and I make you and this people different than any other people on the face of the earth. Y'all ready for this? Watch now. Then he says, 17, the Lord said unto Moses, I will do this thing also that thou hast spoken, for thou hast found grace in my sight, I know thee by name. And he said, I beseech or pray thee, show me thy glory. Glory is presence of face. And he says, I will make all my goodness pass before thee, and I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee, and will be gracious unto whom I will be gracious, and will show mercy unto whom I will show mercy. And he said, Thou canst not see my face, for there shall no man see me and live. And the Lord said, Behold, there is a place by me, there's a place by me, thou shalt stand upon the rock, and it shall come to pass while my glory passeth by, that I will put thee in a cliff of the rock, and will cover thee with my hand while I pass by, and I will take away my hand, and thou shalt see my back parts, but my face shall not be seen. Now, something, I, I always had a problem with that. Because we read earlier, when Moses and God is talking, they said, God and Moses were talking face, face to face. face. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now he's saying here, that you can't see my face in this. That's right. When Miriam and Aaron confronted Moses, God said to them, because Moses talked with me face to face as a man talked with a friend, mm -hmm. you should have been afraid. Mm -hmm. And he cursed Miriam with leprosy, mm -hmm. but he couldn't do anything with Aaron because he, he had an hour of his mm -hmm. Here's the thing. Because Moses found favor with God, how did he get that favor? By actually becoming the intercessor. Look at your paper. The intercession. Moses the intercessor. He actually became the intercessor between Abraham's promise with God and God's judgment. God was about ready to wipe out everything he promised to Abraham if Moses didn't stand in the gap. Mm -hmm. But because Moses stood in the gap, Moses found grace and favor with God because he brought God's own word back to him and reminded him what he had promised Abraham. I told you, everything was about Abraham because God swear, if I don't bring to pass everything I promise you, that I will die the death which means I will kill myself. Seeing that there was nobody greater than God, he took an oath to himself that if I don't fulfill everything that I said, that I would take my own life. And he reminded him, he reminded him of the promise that he made to Abraham. He became the intercessor. And God said, you found favor. And 
because of this, because of this, I'm going to give you everything you asked for. Now watch. The, what the difference that made the difference between Israel and everybody else, all the other races upon the face of the earth, was Jesus. Out of Israel, I call my son. The Savior of the world came out of Israel. Mm -hmm. God made a difference. <laughs> when you use that word Savior, that means the preserver. And Noah's generation, the world was full of wicked and full of sin. God destroyed it with the flood. Instead of God destroying the world again, he came in the form of Jesus. And preserved it until the day of judgment. <laughs> but he came through Israel. And made Israel a different, a people unto himself. And Moses reminded him of that and stood in the gap so that God will keep his word. I said this, I think it was either month, Sunday night or Monday, if you begin to pray, <coughs> because of what Jesus did, Jesus came up saying, God said to Abraham, in that promise, that he make him the father of many nations, of the nations as races, ethnic groups, both Jew and Gentile. Now that you are saved and filled with the Holy Spirit, if you begin to pray and say, God, that you are the seed of Abraham, yes, now that you have the Holy Spirit, you are not a yes. seed of Abraham. If you remind God that you are Abraham's seed, mm -hmm. you better be careful and watch what God will do. <laughs> because, yes, because the bridge between God's and Abraham's blessing yes, yes, has, been, has, has brought us together, and that's Jesus. Mm -hmm. See, Jesus came, he had two, two things to fulfill. One, to remove sin off the world to bring our everlasting covenant with Israel, but also to bring in the other sheep that wasn't of the fold of Israel, and that was the Gentile. Mm -hmm. He told the disciples, he said, the other sheep that I have that are not of this fold, Jews, them also must I go and bring in. And he told, them, he told the disciples, he said, don't you go to the Gentiles. After, after I'm dead and gone, I'm raising up somebody else that's going to get to the Gentile. We raise up Paul. <laughs> Paul became an apostle to the Gentiles. <laughs> then God raised him up. And now we have a chance. Thank you, Lord. And on the day of Pentecost, every nation under the sun was in Jerusalem. And they got filled with the Holy Spirit. They stayed in Jerusalem for three years and got the gospel of Jesus Christ taught to them by the apostles. And then when they learned it, they left and went back to their countries and spread the message of Jesus Christ. Yes, yes. Now the gospel has been preached all over the entire world. You can travel. I got to go carry the gospel all over the world. We got to carry it all over the world. It's been all over the world. Uh -huh. We're living in the time now where it's time for the manifested sons to come forth. The preaching of the gospel is over. It's time for the saints to start maturing. It's time for us now to start preparing for the return. This is, this is, this is the day before judgment. So the moment you start preaching profession, after that, judgment comes. Mm -hmm. Are you understanding this? Mm -hmm. This gospel, it is here. It's here from them which are lost. And if somebody rejects this or don't understand this, it's because they are lost. That's a hard pill to swallow, but that's the truth. They're lost. I don't get it. You're lost. And 
there's nothing we can do about it because God is the one that what? Causes us to understand. Amen. And so I tell you, I don't want to hear that mess. I've had this fuck. I don't want to hear that mess. Get in my face with that mess. I ain't hurt. But don't you spell the fuck? They done rejected me. If I take it personal, then it's about me. But don't you supposed to be concerned? If we get that concerned and so caught up with people rejections, you ain't gonna be able to function. He will wound it for our transgression. He will bruise for our wounded. The world is full of rejection. Amen. And he said that this will happen. It won't be this way. Get ready. Prepare yourself. Because I'm telling you, I honestly feel, and I've been feeling this a lot today, especially today, that this eight days of glory is setting us up for a wind of change. That a lot of you preachers and those who are even not even preaching yet, your ministry is getting ready to change. I, I can feel the wind blowing. It's getting ready to change. And I, and 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 while ago, what I kept feeling, I kept feeling like an earthquake. And God's getting ready to shape, shape your ministries. Give me some things that are just get ready to be loosed out of you. And you're gonna have liberty. And boldness yes. to speak the truth. Yes. 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 Just, just let it rip. <laughs> <laughs> let it go. <laughs> yes, sir. Amen. Come on, let's give God a hand. I will say this. I'm going to turn back over to Pastor Brian. I feel the spirit of intercession. You know how we always used to stand in, in the gap and say intercede for the people? And stand in the gap and intercede, intercede for all. So I feel, I really strongly feel that's lifting. I really feel the need of us perfecting the body, perfecting the saints. So when this gospel of the kingdom is preached over the entire world, it's the end come. And this gospel has been preached over the entire world. So now we need to preach the end. And the end message is perfection. I want you to just open your mouths and I want you to just begin to pray. You can stop.